and they've tried to keep it in check because it could become a movement in itself. Now, even when you come down to these ridiculous laws in Washington State and Oregon where you're not allowed to collect your own rainwater off your own roof or even on your own property, so let's say you had 100 acres, they still forbid you to collect your own water because eventually it'd run off and then they could sell it somewhere. ADAPT 2030 Mini Ice Age Conversations covers changes in our climate due to a new and intensifying grand solar minimum. In the media, overlooking, downplaying, or burying cold weather changes occurring on our planet. This is in order to keep the global warming agenda steaming full speed ahead. I do this podcast and radio program because we need to begin conversations on how to adapt our food growing strategies long before 2030 as agricultural zones shift, affecting global crop output, but very few mainstream media outlets are talking about the most important issue of our time, cold weather crop losses. Our sun is going through a 400 year cycle, which has effects on our weather patterns as our magnetosphere weakens and the jet streams go out of flow. It's not CO2, it's not you, it's the sun. Are you ready to thrive in the grand solar minimum? Then join me for many Ice Age Conversations. I'm your host, David Dubine. When you get to this kind of thing where you're forbidden from collecting your own rainwater, you're forbidden from having certain types of gardens because it goes against the city ordinance or the neighborhood ordinance or whatever, where they come in and they make you rip your gardens up because you can only have ornamental plants in your front yard. You can't have anything that you can eat. You know, we're getting into the twilight zone here. Understanding quarter acre gardening and half acre gardening, which I'm super into. Again, there's so many ordinances that say if you overgrow a certain amount, you become a business. And I'm like, wait a second, growing half an acre of my own food, how does that make me a business now? So they try to force you through legislation into certain slots because business even if it's for your personal consumption, then you're supposed to get permits for cleanliness and phycosanitary and all this thing, refrigeration. You have to have a, a dedicated storage facility that has to come under X, Y, and Z protocols. But hey, it's my own thing that I'm growing. Oh no, it's too big. You're, you're a commercial farm now. So what is with all these regulations that they try to pull you back in the box? And as soon as anybody does organize... They just come in and say, oh, now it's a cult. You can't do that. Or so they'll try to label everybody. Don't go out there. It's a cult. They got 20 people living off the land. Something like this. And you see it repeatedly. Again, it's a demonization in the media of that lifestyle. Exactly. I, I couldn't agree more. So, I mean, if we're going into these times and all of a sudden, you know, you see a few successful communities and then it keeps growing. And there are. There's a lot of communities out there now that are growing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an alternative way of doing things. There's a lot of beautiful alternative ways of doing things out there. And uh, if you hear noise in the background, it's because Zeke is enjoying a bone as we were talking. There's so many alternative ways. That's one of the keys out of the system. And they know it, so they, they want that suppressed most definitely. It's just amazing the mindset of the leadership of this world, which we supposedly elect in this country and many countries as well. You know, supposedly they're elected, but when they get in there, it's never the agenda of the people. It's always business as usual, you know, the corporate business. And uh, very disconcerting that things never seem to really change. They actually seem to kind of keep spiraling in the wrong direction the most times. It's the illusion It is the illusion that there's possibility to change something. Otherwise, people might just give up hope and have revolt. It is an illusion. Yeah. Do we we still have a feudal society? And this is all just an illusion. Yes. Absolutely, yes. Go over in Europe and tell me that they're not back into a feudal system with an unelected dictatorship, new kings and queens running the monarchy to dictate and tell the citizens they have no land rights, They have no personal freedom of speech rights, how you can be arrested for putting a tweet out now. Your land can be confiscated for any possible reason, including the rollout of the 5G network. You know, the new right-of-way laws, I don't know. Now, 5G is not so huge in the U.S. in terms of knowledge of what it is. But here's an example of how ridiculous it's become. And speaking of cycles, my new book with my co-author, Bill Porter, 
Climate Revolution, a must-read for understanding our sun-driven climate. As we progress deeper into this new Eddy Grand Solar Minimum, weather extremes leading to global food scarcity and higher food prices are here now. This book describes the expected changes, how to survive and thrive during future challenging times, and also practical preparations. The entire book is interactive with over 250 links. So you can click and go out to the scientific aspect of what we're talking about with the repeating cycles in this grand solar minimum. The science is explained so you understand the mechanisms. The solutions are there because we know we're going to face these exact same problems again that were faced in the Maunder Minimum, the Sporer Minimum, the Wolf Minimum. Find designs for building greenhouses, grow guides, beam soil techniques, as well as bioreactors to create your own growth hormones for the soil. Available now, the new Adapt 2030 Climate Revolution. The link's in the description box below. All right, so this 5G tower, they're really closely spaced together. And trees knock, knock down the signal about uh, 60 to 70 percent, depending on the species and the leaf density and the leaf width, etc. But any tree, when the leaves become wet, they knock down the signal 100 percent. Now, because of this, in the uh, line of sight that the governments across Europe, including the UK, are trying to install this full 5G network that also needs to be done by 2023, has to be fully implemented by 2023. Rapid rollout right on the same timelines with the mass, mass food shortages coming up across the planet, same time frame. They have the imminent domain right to now go on your private property to cut down your trees because it interferes with the signal right of way uh, between the, the carrier signal on the two towers. So let's say you have an English country home or you're in France on your own private estate. If they say, oh, that, that signal is being blocked by your tree. They have the legal right to come in and cut it down now. And it could be a 100-year-old tree, a fruit-bearing 100-year-old tree. Could be orchards. They're, they're clear-cutting an enormous amount of trees across uh, Europe and the UK. Now, just my, I'll, I'll start with the point here for just a second. Now, my own personal understanding of 5G was very limited. I heard about it. I didn't know much about it. So I spoke at Alternative View 10 in the UK just uh, May 10th through May 14th. Three of the speakers were on about 5G. I didn't know it and now I am terrified of it. This is a monster in the room, the 50,000 pound gorilla waiting to beat you to a pulp and rip your appendages off in the room with you. It's not just a gorilla in the room, it is something that wants to beat you, rip you apart and then devour you. The way they're trying to get this thing rolled out so quickly and the amount of trees they cut down. See, here's the thing. The people are taking action now, not because of the wave that can cause bodily harm and, you know, disrupt your cells and cause all kind of health problems. Nope. Nobody cared about that. What they did care about was the number of trees being cut down to implement this 5G system. So I'll tell you the story. This is what I learned from AV10. You know, I encourage people to go to conferences now because... What I learned is a, before I spoke, I was the last speaker after the two days. So I got to sit in there and listen to very high level people for two straight days on subjects I was unfamiliar with, which was amazing for me. The UK and the British Railways is going to run their trains on 5G. Now, back in the 1800s, the same railway network planted an enormous amount of trees along all tracks because at that time they were burning coal. So the fly ash coming out, as well as the pollution, the smoke, and the noise, they knew that these trees would absorb that as the trains were cruising down the tracks. So everywhere you look across the British railway systems, there are, you know, old growth, literally it's old growth forests for thousands and thousands of miles. They're going to clear cut all of it to implement 5G. And then that was the straw that broke the camels back there. But the original protest started in Newcastle because what they would do is they would go into a neighborhood and they'd say, all right, we need to install these 5G towers. And they would go in and clear cut streets. Now, this irked people because they would go to work in the morning and they had 80 year old, 100 year old trees along both sides of the streets and these old English uh, row houses, really nice. 
And they would come home and it would be a clear cut street and their property values dropped 30 percent in a matter of hours while they went to work. So they came home and their streets are entirely clear cut. All right, so this made the news, people furious, trying to hold meetings, uh, city council wouldn't budge, wouldn't do it. Well, it's a rollout of 5G, it's a national thing now. Nothing we can do, go back to work and quit complaining. But then it, it happened on the second street. And then it made more news and people started to organize online like, hey, uh, this is not good. Our street got clear cut too and our property values just dropped. And then it happened on the third street. It was right around the fourth, maybe fifth street that this occurred on, of this clear cutting where they started to organize across social media. So if you see the clear cutting trucks getting at the edge of your neighborhood or street, flood social media with it and we'll come out and we'll get neighborhood organizations and people literally come out of your house with a baseball bat and stop these tree cutting crews from going down the streets. Now they wouldn't come as just like a single truck like we're used to, you know, they'll come and they'll cut a few branches and they'll move on. They would come in with six of the largest tree cutting chipping trucks, six at a time, and go through and clear cut as fast as they could, save the large lumber pieces to be loaded on trucks behind it. Who knows what they're doing with that lumber? But they would take and clear cut an entire street as fast as they could. Now the neighbors came out and started to organize. And at that point, they stopped the tree cutting from going on for a short period of time. But now these images came out that I saw at this conference, Alternative View 10, organized by E&R Crane. They have armed military going in with the tree cutting trucks now. And when I say armed military, they're not walking in there with a baton and maybe some mace spray and maybe a nine millimeter sidearm or something. They are fully, fully in their battle gear with automatic weapons to go in to get these clear cutting trucks to go through neighborhoods because now they're coming out in the thousands to protest this. So that was in Newcastle. Then they started doing it in York. And they also started doing it in this old port town called Plymouth. Well, that was the straw that really broke the camel's back right there, because now it's a full on organization across the UK. And these are the kind of links they're going to to make sure that 5G gets rolled out. Now, the downtown city centers are something different. They're not the neighborhoods. There's the property values very different in the commercial properties versus your home real estate on a street. They're going in and they're 3D mapping cities and they're telling the governments and the city councils of the city. All right, we need to remove these 16000 trees because they're going to interfere with the signal. So they've already mapped it out where the signal interference is going to be versus the vegetation right now. So what they're doing before they even roll in the 5G network is they're making the cities clear cut every single line of sight interference point with a tree. They're clear cutting entire parks in the cities. They're clear cutting entire forests inside what would be, you know, walk around parks with lakes inside the cities. They're clear cutting the entire railway network of British railway system. Now, something is very, very wrong when they're going in and cutting 4 million trees to implement a system in 2019. Now, people are starting to stand up. They don't care about the wave. They don't care about the health risks of the signal frequency. They care about the millions of trees being cut down. Now, that's just the UK, what I described to you. Now, this is going on in every single country in Europe. Something is very wrong when they need to cut down our natural defense to implement this system. And I'll stop right there. Do you think perhaps this is tied into what they know is coming with uh, mass panicking, rioting, you know, food shortages? So is it, is it more just another system with uh, high technology for crowd control, perhaps? And maybe even worse? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we talked about this briefly in our last conversation. Yes, it is. Because, you know, the military already has these crowd control frequency devices that are on top of Humvees. Now, the amount of frequency that they can pulse into a crowd is a very small, very minute amount. You know, so if you have a, a crowd of, say, 5,000 people, they can take those dishes and point them at probably, you know, 50 to 100 people. And that's the only effect because then they'll have to swing the disc or the dish somewhere else. And then those people that were affected by the frequency wave are no longer affected because they're not in the wave any longer. So the crowd control on thousands of people with, you know, a couple Humvees with their uh, frequency crowd control devices, completely ineffective on thousands of people. But when we're talking about mass starvation and people breaking in, into supermarkets and looting, as you alluded to, and going to food storage facilities, that's going to take way more crowd control than all the police and all the armies of our worlds combined. I don't care if you put every single army out in the street of the entire planet's 
combined military force of just dudes or ladies on the street with weapons to control mass crowd starving people, there will be nowhere near enough, not even close to being enough. And the soldiers are probably going to sympathize with the starving people and they're not going to fire on them. So you have the human factor involved there. You have your own individual citizens of your own country with your internal military. It's probably not going to take too much action. I mean, you got a woman walking up with starving children. Everybody's emaciated. You start to see all these zombie movies and you start to put that together like, hey, maybe it's not disease. Maybe it's starving people. But if you like really be a soldier and if you see hundreds of women with starving babies walking up going, please give us food. And then they start to push on the gates and then men also start to get involved and start to push on the gates. Are you really going to fire on those women and children with live rounds? I don't think so. TrueLeafMarket.com. I really want to talk about growing your own food, which will be a necessity moving forward. There's so many ways that we can go about growing different types of vegetables that we're going to need. You know, microgreens are incredibly nutritious. They're super fast to grow. In less than a week, you can have something that you can eat. Also, sprouts. We can get those a little bit taller, a little more dense, a little bit larger volume on the vegetation mass coming off of there. So how do you know what kind of sprouts to grow? How about wheatgrass or herbs? What about different types of herbs that we can add to our foods? Now, what I just described to you, there's a full range of starter guides there at trueleafmarket.com for you to take a look at. Even if it's just for your own knowledge and you don't purchase something from them, at least get the information so you know how to grow microgreens, you know how to grow sprouts, you understand what some of the herbs are for. Trueleafmarket.com. Use the link below and give yourself the gift of organic and heirloom seeds. You're probably going to have more sympathy for them. Because maybe your family's starting to starve somewhere else too. But the implementation of the 5G grid adds a whole new level of complexity to it. Because this 5G grid is all encompassing across the city. It penetrates walls, it penetrates concrete, it penetrates steel, glass, ceramic, anything except earth and tree leaves and trees. Get that. Because you hit it on earlier, you know, if you're gonna be living in an earth dome home surrounded by trees this is going to be one of the only way you can protect yourself from the 5g signal so if you can implement this thing across the city and these towers are about every thousand feet 1500 feet depending where you are they're going to have thousands of towers inside a city all beaming signal across the entire city in a grid now inside that carrier wave that connects all those towers interconnectedly and the lidar radar that's spinning every three seconds to connect the internet of things and surveying everybody's home in real time. And if you think I'm full of it, you need to do your own research and you need to check out this movie called The 5G Apocalypse. And Mark Steele was one of the speakers at this conference and he was so powerful the way he delivered the information. Okay, so you have the, the carrier wave that's integrating the entire system, but inside that you can have other frequency waves that you can ride on top of the main carrier wave crowd control waves, the same frequencies that they're using on top of Humvees can be generated inside the entire 5G network. You can control entire cities at that point. You don't need your Humvees out there anymore with the frequency waves. You don't need the soldiers out there or the police on the streets. You can control an entire city with a frequency inside the 5G network. This is where it gets terrifying because he's identified three different waves so far. One is for skin agitation that makes you feel like your skin's burning. Another one is for incapacitating you to the point that as an adult grown person, you're so disoriented that you can't actually get up and find your way to a doorknob and open it to get out of a room. That's how much they can disorient you. And then the other third one was uh, the one that they use for the crowd control that can take you to your knees and make you vomit. Those three waves can be included inside and right on top of the 5G network. And then he was his whole thing was about if they triangulate in on that and they boost the carrier wave signal, like let's say you're on a, a street corner and there's like four towers around you. With your mobile phones and with your profiles, if they find you too much of a threat, they can actually triangulate and boost the signal in and disrupt your cellular structure and cause death. Now for you and me, it would look like you're having a heart attack on the street. It would look like you're having an aneurysm, maybe a seizure, maybe a stroke. But you're being energy frequency weapon targeted 
inside that carrier wave. And this is the whole thing he was on about. They're going to weaponize the system for crowd control. Social media profiles are assessing whether you're a threat right now, whether you're going to help during these times. And they're already, they have full profiling going on on almost everybody on the planet who's in social media. You've already been profiled and set into a category. And it wasn't just one category, okay, where they're, they're a criminal, and there's another category where they're pretty passive, they followed the government mandates so far, whatever. It's not that black and white. They say there's up to like 200 different categories and subcategories that you fall under. This is where this carrier frequency wave's going, and this is why 5G is so terrifying. After I presented my information on the Grand Solar Minimum, everybody else's information in there had these same set timelines. That's why I keep talking about timelines. The timelines have been set for 2023 that all these systems need to be completed and up and functional across the entire EU. Now, why is it that I paying 2023 and 2024 is the coldest time with the first global food shortages? And here you come with a frequency control weapon for crowd control, all pinging on the same exact timelines that that 5G network needs to be completely rolled out, completely functional by 2023. And we're here on the global food shortages at 2023. So something's overlapping into the nefariousness in my, uh, in my personal opinion. I talked a little bit too long there, Michael. I'll let you go. <laughs> no, no, no. You're passionate about it. And I know that's one of the biggest things that you're concerned with right now. And we all shall, should be. And uh, honestly, you know, I'm listening to you and I'm saying to myself, they're already doing it because I have clients coming into me for exactly the symptoms you're talking about now. I mean, and not just clients, but other people just, just experiencing their skin burning, tingling, a disorientation. You know, some of this could be due to the cosmic rays coming in, you know, the exposure to the ultraviolet. But, you know, some of it just feels like they're already doing this. And, uh, you know, one person, um, down in Mexico, you know, it w was going through a horrible hard time just feeling like like their skin was getting burned and no explanation. And I worked on them distance wise and they got relief. It's coming back a little bit now, but the, she's still feeling better. But still, they're, this is part of the plan. We know it. It, it makes perfect sense what you were saying. It, it all goes together. Uh, so, I mean, we could take some hope that we, we can do things to help ourselves. And uh, I know one of the things they hate is energy work because everything is frequency, energy, vibration. It, it's the mysteries of the universe. And so, you know, we could really heal ourselves if, if we actually take the time to look into these systems. And uh, as I've shared uh, with so many of my audience before, I've studied Qigong, practiced that for uh, like around 30 years now. And then there's medical qigong, which gets into, you know, in depth a lot more Reiki. I'm a Reiki master teacher and uh, pranic healing as well as other systems. Really, it's all about consciousness. Uh, when you get down to it, you know, they're all just different tools. Uh, but it's all about consciousness and recognizing the fact that we really have tremendous power over our own bodies, our environment. We, our, our perception is what's creating uh, our reality. It's, it's, it's all about programming and that's how they've programmed us throughout the years as well to create the reality that they want. Hence, you know, I, I look now so suspiciously at a lot of prophecies, whether we're tapping into the collective consciousness or whether it's being seeded, you know, so that it will come about. It's all very interesting to, to look at, but without a doubt, uh, there is a grid coming down around us right now. And uh, it's a scary grid, most definitely. Well, no, I want to interject as well. Uh, they're very able to stop this. Ian R. Crane, the one who uh, has organized Alternative View 10, they were against fracking about seven years ago because they really started fracking in the UK hard. And then everybody's water supplies were being contaminated and they started to get a lot of sickness and farm animals were dying all over the place because of the groundwater contamination or after fracking. So what they did was they took a unique approach where they got the oldest people in the communities, the grandmothers, grandfathers, and they called it, get this, this is the new code or new keyword that they try to use, geriactivism, like a geriatric, geriactivism. So what they did was they got the oldest people to come in and be the uh, ones going out to start to protest the fracking. 
Well, then what the knock on effect was their grandchildren and younger generation was like, whoa, what are all these old people doing out there protesting? This must be something kind of strange because those are the ones that always are, you know, the ones that take action. They're not on the computer too much. There must be something really wrong. And A, they had the most resources. Most of them have private attorneys because just after a while you have an accountant and you have a family lawyer. And then they also had funds and then the police weren't going to go in and hit them with batons and sick the dogs on them because they were a bunch of older people that were protesting. So they used the top down approach and they were able to stop all fracking across the UK. So it came out to this activism, again, groups of people organizing to stop it. And it worked. Now, can it work for 5G? Perhaps. And what, what was explained to me, these 5G towers, what you're going to look for is the ones that are really, really, really tall. They're nothing like the regular towers that we're used to seeing. The main carrier wave that's going to connect with the others around it, you're going to find one incredibly tall spire. And then around that, then you need to look. And they're trying to disguise them. They're trying to disguise them. They're trying to do as much disguising of these 5G network towers as they can. They try to make them look like trees. They try to make them look like cactus, whatever it is. They try to disguise it. At the bottom of those towers, unbeknownst to me, there's two cooling boxes, and then there's a box that allows the, uh, the actual software to run. Now, these things are running at such high temperatures, they actually need cooling devices beneath them. I didn't know that either, that these things are running at such a high frequency that they actually need their own internal cooling mechanism to keep those things functional. Well, you know, like if one of those cooling boxes would be disconnected or one of them breaks, that tower will catch on fire. That's how high frequency these things are running at. So they need their own cooling systems. And if that, wherever to, something happened to the cooling system, the tower would ignite on fire. You know, so there's a lot of risks going on with this entire thing here where you got a fire risk if the cooling unit breaks down. I mean, geez. Uh, you know, like that should be a signal right there of how, how, how what kind of frequency is coming out of this thing? At what rate is it pulsing like that? And secondly, I want to add one more point here. It's something this is the dirty, dark secret that they are trying to mask. And I bet our phone call goes down when I try to tell you this. <laughs> the frequency wave is pulsing at such a high frequency that if you have any other smart devices in your home, the router on your wall or wherever you have the router in your house, the smart devices that you have, like smart refrigerators, smart TV, smart coffee makers, smart whatever, they're finding that if you have five or more smart devices in your house with your regular Wi-Fi router, when they put these new 5G towers, they have an enormous amount of home fires. Now, what's happening is these overlapping waves are causing what you're talking about exactly, electrical frequency that's turning into physical energy in our third dimensional space. Now, these fires are very discernible. They have a distinct fingerprint. These things ignite on the inside of the home and burn everything out at like super high heat. But when you walk by this house, if they had curtains drawn over the window, you would never know there was a home fire in there. The exterior of the structure is not damaged in any shape or form. Things are burning from the inside out. And this is the scariest thing that they really don't want people to know is because the amount of home fires, they actually, in the beginning in the UK, when they would install the 5G towers, there would be clusters of home fires around where they would put these things. And then the fire department would go in and investigate the fire, and they would ask the residents a bunch of questions like, how many smart devices do you have? Did you have anything over? So they wanted to find out where all the uh, smart devices were located around the house to see if they could figure out where these interference waves were, where the actual spark or ignition took place. Is there a different way to space out smart devices so you don't get this interference wave It'd be like a bunch of ocean waves piling on top of each other and eventually they smash in the middle and they jump up a few feet. Well, it's the same thing. When that get jump up a few feet or whatever, that's the frequency that just ignites everything. You know how energy works? It doesn't have to be a flame. It could be an energy frequency that causes ignition, and that's exactly what's happening. In the database, they'd put all these data points together. When the 5G tower went up, how many smart devices this person had, all this thing. All this data was loaded in. And you know what? They started to find such a 100% correlation that the 5G industry required fire departments to keep separate databases. So they removed all the information. So now all you do is you get there was a home fire. You have to go to a complete separate government entity to find that there was a 5G tower near it. And then you have to go to a complete different database set, completely different set of government statistics, completely over on the left side that requires you to work for the government to even sign in to that database to see, oh, there was a smart fridge in it. 
Now, then they split the database again. They got a completely separate database, completely set. Oh, there was a Wi-Fi router. And then there's a completely different set of database with a completely set of different government institution that will see, oh, there was a smart uh, coffee maker in there. So they're trying to disassociate any kind of overlapping of these smart devices in your home, coupled with the LIDAR sweeping your home every three seconds for real time, mapping of your home where you are, and then also the 5G carrier signal rolling in your home and causing these fires. They are doing the utmost to not let you know that you are in grave danger of a home fire if you have smart devices and the 5G network goes up around you. Now, why would they go to such lengths to hide that information is beyond me, unless they're trying to cover it up. This video is brought to you by our friends at trueleafmarket.com. Heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet.